I've always enjoyed the creative space of card game design, having played too many and working on a fair few. So there are a bunch of hurdles I've come up with rather clean solutions to. In my Godot 4 course, I finished a small roguelike card game where I got to put some of these solutions in stone and make them available more publicly. If you want source code and written guides, helping try out Godot 4, there are links in the description. For now though, we can delve into the nuances of programmatically fanning a hand of playing cards. A hand of cards is a fairly complex shape, and like all programming problems, is a task that needs to be broken into its component, easier to tackle steps. The cards are aligned horizontally and have a maximum amount of space they can take up. The cards either raise up in the centre or lower at the edges. It depends on your perspective. Both views are valid. The cards are found so they rotate clockwise the further right they go and counterclockwise the further left they go. Finally, they're stacked on top of each other, so they either get closer to us as they go right, or as they go left. You can choose either, all that really changes is whether the top left or the top right of the card is visible. These four principles are what we need to achieve in code to create a found hand of cards. Spreading the cards horizontally to a maximum width, raising the cards in the middle of the hand, rotating the cards more as they get further from the centre, and each card getting closer to the camera in sequence. For following along yourself, you're going to need some cards. I made these in Blender with beveling and smooth shading to round the corners, but this isn't required. You can use a cube mesh with the right dimensions. Typical playing cards are 2.5 by 3.5 inches. You can make the remaining dimension very thin and just keep to that aspect ratio. In Godot, we can create a copy of that card scene we made earlier with the instantiate function, then add them as a child of the current node. I'm going to call this node the hand, and rest easy knowing it's where the centre of our hand of cards will be. This has already got a bit messy though, as all of the five cards overlap each other at the centre of the hand. To deal with this, we can focus on step one, spreading the cards horizontally to fill the maximum width. Our hand can have any number of cards between zero and infinity, but we do have boundaries. The leftmost card can only go a maximum distance to the left, and the rightmost card can only go a maximum distance to the right. The rest of the cards should be evenly spread between those two points, so let's assign each card a weighting between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. This weighting is going to give us a position between all the way left at 0.0, .0 and all the way right at 1.0. You can deduce that a weight of 0.5 will be a position in the middle of our hand. For a hand of 5 cards, we will get some numbers that look like this. There is a very tidy function we can use to calculate this ratio. We take the index of the card we want to calculate, and divide it by the total number of cards minus 1. In programming with indexes, we tend to count from 0. This is a bit of a logistical convenience, as in binary, counting in zeros and ones, the smallest number we can store is zero, ignoring it would just waste memory. We subtract one from the total number of cards, as this gives us the index of the last card in our hand. This function returns 0.0, .0 when passing in an index of zero, and 1.0 when passing in the index of the final card. There is an important caveat to bear in mind here. When there is only one card in our hand, our function tries to divide by zero. This is a big no-no, which gives a result that isn't a number, so we really want to avoid that particular outcome. In fact, when we only have one card at hand, we want to position it in the middle of our hand by setting the weight to 0 0.5. Rather than make our function any more complex, we can add a little step at the start that says if we have one card in our hand, set the weight to 0.5, otherwise fall back on the function we described earlier. This weight we've calculated is a unique value we can use to calculate the positioning information for every card in our hand. 
But to understand how we're going to generate that positioning information, we need to talk a little bit about curves. A curve, or graph of a function, describes how an input maps onto an output. Say we have a curve, it has an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is the input value for our function. The corresponding y-axis value is our function's output. Each x value maps directly onto a y value. The Godot game engine lets you create Bezier curves graphically in the inspector using a curve resource. We can control these curves to get highly customized output values when the x coordinate is between 0.0 and 1.0. This makes them pretty ideal for figuring out how to position all the cards in our hand. You can think of this curve as showing what values the cards get on the left side of the hand, the middle of the hand, and on the right side of the hand. We just get a lot of precise control. For our first curve, we want to spread the cards to the left of the hand if they are less than 0.5, and to the right if they are above 0.5. This is a linear relationship, so we can create it with a straight line plotted through two points. When x is 0, 0.0, i.e. on the far left of our hand, we should output negative 1.0, and when x is 1.0, i.e. on the far right of our hand, we should output positive 1.0. This happily works out such that when x is 0 0.5 in the middle, 0, 0.0 is output. Enough talk though, let's put that to use. Take the reference to the curve and call it interpolate function, with the x coordinate we're passing in. That pops out the mapped y coordinate. If we shift the x position of the card by that y value and exaggerate it a bit, you can see the card shift left and right relative to the centre of the hand. You can then fiddle with how much to exaggerate the offset by until you settle on a maximum width for your hand. Now we can focus on shifting the cards up and down as they get further from the centre. We can tackle this problem exactly the same way as we tackled the width. Define a height curve. This remains at zero in the middle of the hand, but as we approach the edges, yields a result closer to negative 1.0. In code, multiply the result by a directional vector pointing up, and the hand will offset appropriately. If we move the camera around, the problem starts to reveal itself though. The hand needs to be oriented towards the camera. You can update the basis of the cards to use the camera's basis. We can also multiply our offsets by this camera's basis, so the cards shift up on the screen rather than in world space. This basis offset also lets us move each card so they stack on top of each other, rather than overlapping. The last thing we need is to rotate the cards to fan them out. Let's think about what value we need to set their rotations to to achieve this. With this hand, our leftmost card is about 15 degrees anti-clockwise transitioning to 15 degrees clockwise on the right. This curve should therefore return a positive value on the left, zero in the middle, and a negative value on the right. Making this relationship linear looks a bit too uniform to me though. I suggest a curve like this, so there's less rotation in the middle of the hand. My cards handle their rotation within the card script itself. This helps the card handle ignoring its rotation when hovered over, and similar tasks like that. And with that up and running, we have a fanned hand of cards, all achieved with highly customizable curves. The card game itself is available in my courses demo on Itch, and the course gives you access to source code and written guides for getting up and running in Godot 4. There's links in the description. This was a much more difficult to make and more illustrative video than usual. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more like this, and what aspects of card game design you're interested in hearing about. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one.